start now? Yep. Yep. All right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Monica. I'm the office manager here at Double Fine, and we are going to do a special devs play today where we're going back to ancient Egypt. Uh, we have Max from Ubisoft here, uh, and he is going to show us the discovery tour of Assassin's Creed Origins. Thank you so much, Monica. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, uh, yeah, it's a very special occasion to talk about uh, this, this uh, project that we've been working on for the last couple of years. And uh, yeah, very, very exciting. I think uh, we'll go deep into the experience uh, in, a, in a few moments, but um, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, and we also have my friend and colleague, Bethany Simpson. She and I work together uh, excavating a site that's actually in the game. Uh, we excavated at Karanis back in 2009, and she has continually excavated there over the years. So she's joining us via it's the internet. Yeah, I was a graduate student at UCLA, and I started digging at Karanis with my mentor, and I've moved to start heading the excavations there in the last couple of years. I've spent 10 years of my life at Karanis one way or the other. And I'm really excited to see it alive. What I've heard, I've heard great things about it. And I'm really grateful to be able to see the game and play today. Yeah. All right. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we're, uh, we're uh, using a preview build uh, at this moment. So it uh, might be some, some aspects that, that uh, needed some polishing. Uh, at, the, at the moment of the launch of the Discovery Tour, it's going to be fixed. Uh, but it might be some, some typos here and there, and then also uh, there, there's going to be some content missing because it's a preview build, but I'll explain That's that <laughs> on, on the way along. All right. <coughs> so we're, uh, we're arriving in Egypt at this yeah. moment uh, <laughs> with this small introduction. So we used to have this, uh, this intro for Assassin's Creed games for a long time where we explained that uh, the team is composed of very uh, you know, different people with different beliefs uh, and, and perspectives. Well, this time it's a bit longer because it's a, a new game. I like the National Geographic font. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, uh, yeah, we felt like we wanted to explain a little bit uh, before, uh, beforehand uh, with this text what is the experience that people are going to play with the Discovery Tour? Mm -hmm. uh, because, because they're not being introduced into a new narrative experience with a, a character. They're really, like, players are being put into this, this, the world of Egypt that we uh, recreated for Assassin's Creed Origins uh, straight from the start. And everything is, is accessible. You can go everywhere uh, in this world. And so uh, at first hand, I guess it can, and can feel like because everything is free, you want to know where you're going. Yeah. You're going to. <laughs> so that's why we, we have this introductionary uh, t title. So we're, um, we're joining an avatar in Alexandria, or the, uh, the Mundor of Alexandria, so that's west of the city, outside of these huge walls. <laughs> so we, uh, we've got this character here. Uh, it's, uh, I think this one is, it's not Shadia, it's another character from Yamu, which is a, another city uh, close to Lake Mariotis, so a bit southwest of where we're at. So we're going to, see she's running quite fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the Canopic Way in Alexandria, which was uh, the, the largest, uh, largest street uh, in that new city. So um, the context of, of the world that we reconstructed is uh, Egypt around 40, 48 uh, BCE. So this Alexandria is, uh, is a Greek city, a Hellenistic city. It was, it was created technically from scratch uh, 300 years or so before, before the time of, of this reconstitution. Um, yeah, lots of soldiers going around with their horses here. We can always use the eagle, That's Senu, if we want, <laughs> here. And we can just go pretty much everywhere we like to. Uh, so we have uh, the Serapion that's here, the temple to Serapis. Uh, we have another big street here of Alexandria, uh, the canals, famous canals. 
that uh, ran on the west part of Alexandria, Rakatis, the technically the uh, former Egyptian village, or a name associated to Alexandria as being the the build, the new site. So. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a way for Egyptians to say that they despised Alexandria because it was a, a Greek city. So I was going to school for ancient literature and my school had uh, excavations that went through uh, the summer in Israel. So I started doing that and then did that for two summers uh, and then for the Egyptian dig at Karanis, I basically just emailed the professor and asked mm -hmm. if they needed a registrar, and they oh. did. So, <laughs> so uh, Bethany we and did. I were, yeah, we're in a tent in Egypt for three months. Yeah. That is, Which it was, was, it was very romantic. It in was, the sense that it, <laughs> that's very, very impressive. Very, it was <laughs> very old school. We were in yeah. tents. We were in tents. There was a house, but we weren't allowed to sleep in it. We, uh, it was just for offices. Well, you had to be yeah. true to the experience. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. Tent really feels like <laughs> they were big tents. They fit two of us, and they had electrical outlets. Yes. So but no fans or no air conditioning or anything luxurious yeah. like that. When you got running sick. water in the house. That was yeah, good. there was. Yeah, there was. Well, except that time when the pipes broke and we didn't have water for two weeks, and no yeah. one could shower. And that was, uh, that was a hell. Um, it was a very authentic archaeological oh, experience. Oh. <laughs> there was a thunderstorm at one point, so we all basically tried to wash our hair in the thunderstorm. Oh, wow. It actually <laughs> downpoured. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was really sad. That's amazing. <laughs> one of our consultants that we've worked with uh, on Assassin's Creed Origins was, uh, was stuck into a sandstorm. Well, we were yeah. trying to have communications with her. Oh my God. So, <laughs> that was funny. She said like everything was, was everything closed for days yeah. afterwards. I don't That's like the, the real struggle for, for uh, Egypt and the Egyptian yeah. sites, especially for archaeology. Yeah. You've been like brooming away. <laughs> like, yes. Oh God. Pottery and <laughs> Ostracon for weeks and like, yeah. no. We're just cruising here. Just, uh, oh. We're on the Lake Mariotis. There's this... Uh, Big trireme here it was it's going going out on, on that uh, what used to be a, a very massive sea uh, just south of Alexandria and that's it's reduced to like twenty percent of its uh, former glory. Yeah, it's the area's all swamp at best. Yeah. 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 yeah now it's like uh, lots of fields. They use a lot of uh, of, um, of irrigation in the area. So it's, it has it has changed a lot. That was it's a it's a big challenge both for archaeologists to understand everything that that they visit and try to put the, their themselves into a perspective of being like uh, two thousand years ago, five thousand five thousand years ago, <laughs> with w what is on site. Yeah. yeah. Even the landscape itself, the land and the water are so different without buildings or anything. There's land now where this lake is. You know. Exactly. Yes. This is impressively large. I'm, I've seen maps of the lake, but this looks bigger than I would have expected, and I'm sure it would have looked like that. With uh, felucas everywhere, like let's try to uh, let's try to ask for a ride. Oh, you can you can well, don't board swim other in it. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's, well. it's not the Nile yet. It's probably okay, but I don't know. <laughs> Back in the days, I mean, there's. Uh, uh, you have a, well, yeah. everyone had parasites from the Nile water, so it doesn't yeah. really matter if they swam in it or not. Even the king's mummies have sign of waterborne parasites. So, it's uh, I guess it, it was a, a real struggle to get to get water. You have oh, and crocodiles here. Is, is oh, this, there's a crocodile. Maybe oh, they, oh, there's yeah. one. Yeah, there's one just over there. It's uh, yeah, filled with crocodiles and the hippos. Oh, hippo. What what really amazing? Do they interact me? in the game level? Can they jump up and snatch you? Uh, in the in the Assassin's Creed Origins, yeah, they they will they will uh, they will need to feed, so they will attack other animals or humans when they feel threatened, and then. Uh, but here we're in this this version of the Discoverator is as uh, is adapted to be uh, uh, more accessible to a broader audience. So we re removed all the the conflict, all the narrative. So it's 
you can go everywhere. There's no pressure of anything. Great. You won't feel threatened. In the regular no, game, hippo attacks. Oh, good. Yeah. In the regular game, can you kill a hippo to prove your manhood? Uh, is that a <laughs> <laughs> well, we can try to thing? attack one, Whoa. but just like in real life, hippos yeah. are... Uh, yeah, they're are, terrifying. Yeah, they're, it's a, it's a very uh, yeah. strong animal. <laughs> yeah. It's actually still is the yeah. most dangerous animal on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah they're, so they're very angry all the time. I don't know why. All right, so my students are still shocked to find out that hippos are dangerous. They're just like, oh, they're those cute little cartoon animals in tutus. <laughs> no, they're even dangerous in the cartoon, though. <laughs> they crush those alligators. That's not. <laughs> all right, let's take another person, another character. So that's oh. a. A, fun, a thing that we wanted to give access to is to have multiple characters, mm -hmm. uh, ac like freely accessible. You can just go into the menu like I did and, and choose the character that you like. You have Egyptian characters, Greek characters. Uh, you can play as, as Bayek, as, the, as the, the main character from Assassin's Creed Origins. You can play as Aya, who's another character from the game. Or you can, you can uh, play with uh, Julius Caesar or Cleopatra or her... Uh, or a super brother Ptolemy the 13th. Mm. No, thank you. <laughs> so the special part with the, the, all of these characters is that we, uh, we wanted to give access to, to all of them, I, even though they were not meant to be, to be seen on camera like full-time like Bayek would be. So uh, their animation is not, is not as perfect as it would be for, uh, for Bayek, for instance. So, if they're riding a horse or a camel, for instance, we, we might see that there's, there are some imperfections, but we felt like giving the uh, ability to have these characters available was more interesting than, than the boo factor of maybe having some glitches in the animation, for instance. So it's uh, 25 characters that you can, you can choose from. Okay. Uh, Does even, it interact with you differently depending on who you pick, or it just doesn't matter? In, in terms of, of uh, you know, when you, if you're a Greek man like this yeah. and you go around, it's it's the same controls, so you can okay. you can climb everywhere. You can yeah. climb up the pyramids, uh, mm -hmm. use the boats like this yeah. one, use a, <laughs> a, a reed boat also if you want to. And then there are some special features that I'll show a bit later on. And then that uh, the perspective changes a lot mm -hmm. depending on the character that you're yeah. that you're using. <laughs> so uh, again, like using. <laughs> You know, driving your own boat, uh, being uh, Cleopatra or being a, a, yeah. a Greek peasant is, uh, is quite different. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going close to uh, uh, Yamu, which was, uh, uh, which is today's called uh, uh, Bernagi, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. if I'm, my, memory is, my memory is fine. All right, lots of, of swamps and marches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just take a look bit of a walk. We're not scared of crocodiles. We know they're not going to attack us yeah. here. So it's, you know, w the, the, the tricky part as being a historian working in a video game company is that you want to give access to information to the, to the development team to inspire people, to give them, you know, access to, to understand what was ancient Egypt like at the time of Cleopatra and, uh, and Julius Caesar. So uh, the great aspect is that everyone has, a, you know, already has a perspective on, of ancient Egypt. It's, it, it is quite far from what we have achieved here. Uh, mm -hmm. What people have in mind most of the time is, is uh, Elizabeth Taylor's Cleopatra, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe uh, other more modern movies, uh, or even video games, historic video games, uh, usually target a very old Egypt, mm -hmm. in time of, of the pharaohs. And uh, the subject that we have here is very different because you, you, you have both the feeling of ancient Egypt, the culture, uh, the richness of, of you know, their literature, the temples, their, their beliefs, uh, their ways of life. But, and at the same time, you have the, the shock of the Greek and Roman presence. Uh, of, of, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a form of colonial, colonialism yes. at the same time. So yeah. it's a subject that, that is very interesting to talk about mm -hmm. in, a, in a video game. It, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, it's not a pink glasses version of, of Egypt. It's, uh, Very, yeah. And do you talk about native versus Roman or Greek Egyptian? Yeah, in, in the, the game, in, in the game, in the game itself, you feel that into the missions. Yeah. And within the discovery tour, it's uh, it's a subject that we want to talk about. Yeah. So the discovery tour itself is is a reuse of the game environment, mm -hmm. uh, without the conflicts, without uh, any any stress on time. But we okay. instead what we offer is. Uh, explanations of of, of uh, history, of geography, of uh, culture. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to also uh, talk about uh, the story of Egyptology. 
yeah. talk about yeah. how how we know the information that we know <laughs> and how we interpret that to make these games. Mm -hmm. So, oh, that's funny. In the, in the background, we see there's a, a procession that's uh, yeah. it's gonna take some place. So here we have a solar boat with a high priest mm -hmm. uh, with oh. uh, ins like she's holding uh, incense. Let's use a subjective camera here. She's holding incense. Uh, he's playing tambourine. Maybe we could have someone uh, with a sistrum, maybe in the back here. I'm not sure what they're, uh, which celebration they're doing. Is it like a live celebration, uh, death? Uh, but they'll. There's a statue of Thoth on there. Yeah, so it's a <laughs> here's a mix where you have Ptah, him. you have <laughs> Ptah you, uh, in the back, you have yeah. oops, you have Tot as a baboon, yeah. of Horus. So um, because we have a lot of deities in ancient Egypt, uh, everywhere we didn't, I mean each each city, each village, pr pretty much has a, a different religion, a different god that they're you know they're praying for. Mm -hmm. uh, here it's uh, Sekhmet. Well, we we tried to make a solar barge like this one that would be that would fit the whole map that would fit for all different temples. Where we don't have mm -hmm. okay. a, a, a barge for every temple, so that it would be uh, that okay. Would just, just be yeah. crazy. Imagine like this map is, is quite fast, mm -hmm. and uh, technically to make these animations with so many characters is very very complex. So when we try to recreate these, we uh, we target the things that are the most impressive, like. Uh, a, a celebration like this one, or maybe a moving an obelisk, something that's very complex technically. Oh, oh my a cat. God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so cat. when we do the research, we try to understand uh, as much as possible the, the ways of ancient Egypt, the things that are the most iconic, and then we try to reproduce that. Uh, so it's uh, it's a big, big challenge, but it's so interesting because yeah. as de game developers, we learn so much on the way. And so, like, how do you edit things down to make it so that, you know, you pick what Ta stays and what goes. And, yeah, and <laughs> so here you pick Ta and uh, ha uh, Horus and uh, Thoth, but how do you edit down, like, you didn't, oh, you do have Isis, uh, but you don't have, like, Osiris or, or other gods on here. That's, yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge. It's, it's uh, to have something that is striking visually. So Horus here is, is just amazing to have yeah. on, the, on the prow and uh, mm -hmm. on the boat. And then uh, Neftis or an Isis. I think this, this is, yeah, uh, Isis. Is it Ma'at, aren't they? Yeah. We called Isis Isaac in the game okay. uh, for obvious reasons. That's her Egyptian yeah. name. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's also her name. So yeah. <laughs> it's, you see, that's the, the kind of, of things where she has multiple names, and then we have to pick one that makes sense. Yeah, right. Uh, to stay but consistent. that is how her name is spelled, so uh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. There's a trend in Egyptology now to go back to the more Egyptian names for everything rather than use the Greek forms. So Iset or instead of Isis is really becoming a trend in Egyptology. It's how I teach the students now. Huh? That's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so in the game we have a uh, Sekhmet. Uh, Thought, uh, Horus, um, Sobek, because of the Fayum, uh, who else? Ptah, because of, of Memphis, and hence uh, uh, Osiris and uh, the Apis Bull. Mm -hmm. And the, on the Greek side, we have okay. uh, Amun. Uh, going into Siwa, we have the Oracle of Amun. Oh, you do have an oracle. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, actually Great. two oracles in the game. Oh, okay. So let's, we let's wondering just go about to Siwa. Yeah. That's all right. That's a <laughs> big jump backwards. Oh. So we were in Alexandria, then on Lake Mariotis, and then in uh, Yamu. And then let's just cross the desert very far, the map far has away. The gnome names. Yeah. yeah. That's we, fantastic. We try to stick to the... Uh, <laughs> to the, uh, the original gnomes as much as, as we could. So Alexandria, uh, see Canopus didn't have a gnome because it was part of Alexandria, but for the game we, uh, we, we put it as a, as a, you know, a border. Uh, Imkent and Kakim were real names. Uh, same with Sap, Sapme and, and all of these Egyptian names here. Yeah, I, I really like the, the detail of not trying to Grecify things too much. The, Alexandria and Heracle Heracleopolis, you can't help 
but the keeping of the actual gnome names as they would have been said by Egyptians. That's awesome. That's great. Like yeah. this one oh, here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I had we had some discussions with the designers <laughs> regarding names like uh, Per Happy and uh, Iwinu. I'm not yeah. sure Iwinu uh, how it's mm -hmm, yeah. how it's said, but it's it, your guess is as good. I mean, we're all <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all linguistics. <laughs> well, we try to we try to stick point. with uh, Egyptian names yeah. when these mm -hmm. locations are Egyptian and Greek names uh -huh. as much as possible. When oh, that's that was cool. that was more uh, accurate, like uh, Kar Karanis. Yeah. That's just strict. We don't have an Egyptian yeah. name for it, really, just the Greek, so. But I yeah. do like the alliterations. That's really cool. Sognopionesos. Yeah. Yeah, there are a mouthful of names, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way that we, that we, you know, the game that we have in the hand in the end, this whole map of Egypt that we, that we try to recreate is, uh, is the consequence of having to choose between different uh, geographical places like having deserts and mountains, having a, a great diversity, like having the white desert, black deserts, uh, uh, the deep Sahara desert, having uh, places that are very important, like uh, the Nile. I mean, that, that, was, that was the bone of Egypt, the backbone of Egypt. So it was very important to, to figure that in the game. So we, we kind of crunched together a huge map. I mean, Egypt yeah. is quite vast. Uh, from the east side here, normally that would be that would be uh, back in the days. Um, how is it called? Uh, so there's <laughs> there's a Greco-Roman city, Pelusium, here in the east. No, normally that would be the entrance to Egypt from the delta of the Nile. Mm -hmm. So that whole place here is, represents the delta of the Nile, but in reality this is thousands of kilometers yes. already <laughs> and now it's merged into something that from the from the top view resembles the delta of the Nile but mm -hmm. it's actually quite but smaller okay. uh, then Alexandria which was really the western part of the delta yeah. north of Lake Mariotis and then here we move into the western part that's actually Libya yeah if compare with the real yeah. time <laughs> yeah. uh, real map much farther yeah so far <laughs> away yeah and, and so and then moving south back to Siwa links you like it, narratively it makes a lot of sense but it's uh, it's a yeah. tough process for us of trying to understand all of these places that that are interesting to show like mm -hmm. uh, Balagre is uh, here it's a it's a Greek mm -hmm. Uh, a, a Greek uh, settlement in uh, in Libya. It was one of the five cities of the Pentapolis. Okay. So, the f five different Greek cities uh, in Libya that were created by uh, uh, by people from uh, Terra, from uh, the Greek islands, way before Alexandria was was actually built. Okay. So, these these uh, Greek settlers created this, the city of Cyrene, which is today a very very interesting. Uh, archaeology site that was that was found anew in the 20th century at the beginning of the century mm -hmm, yeah. and then that, that was mostly lost and forgotten mm -hmm. so knowing that th that site was very important for a narrative knowing that it was visually very striking that's how we come up with knowing that it, it's on the western uh, end of the map mm -hmm. and then going into the the uh, green mountains of Libya uh, uh, and then down to Siwa that would that makes a lot of sense narratively. Uh, again, like we know that uh, Alexander the Great, when he went to Egypt, did the the whole way to go to Siwa. Well, at least that's what is written in history. <laughs> that he made the whole way to go to Siwa, and both in the game and in real life, Siwa is so remote. It's it yeah. still is a very impressive <laughs> feat. But it's it's uh, interesting to see that. Although this is a very small place compared to, I mean, all the cities that exist in Egypt, we compare it to Luxor. For instance, it's quite small, mm -hmm. uh, but narratively for for the time of Cleopatra, it was very important because this is what gave legitimacy to the reign of of uh, Alexander the Great in Egypt, and then the the reigns of the Ptolemies and then Cleopatra. So it's for us these are yeah the information that we that we take into consideration to create the, the map. And so, how do you decide to cut places out? Like you don't have Luxor in here, or you don't have the Sinai Peninsula, which Cleopatra would have 
gone to to seek a s mm -hmm. exile. <laughs> so how do you decide to just, no, it's not good enough for the narrative? And Well, we, it, here because the game was, uh, the Assassin's Creed Origins was mostly talking about the reign of Cleopatra mm -hmm. and, and uh, the, uh, the war on Alexandria. Yeah. Uh, we really focused on this region. And then uh, as, a, as a DLC, uh, we moved into the Sinai yeah. region. Oh, OK. Uh, so that was launched in, uh, in, in January, oh, oh. DLC <laughs> in the Sinai region. And so, uh, so Luxor is obviously a very interesting site. Yes, but that is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has to be a lot of things. It is a lot on its own. It is yeah. incredible. Uh, whereas <laughs> Memphis, for instance, even though yeah. uh, it, today it's very different, it's mostly gone. It's, I mean, it's in the suburbs of Cairo. There's almost nothing left except for uh, uh, a sphinx made of uh, the alabaster sphinx that is not made of alabaster, yeah. and then uh, monumental statues. Uh, the this, this site was so important. I mean, it's the first capital of ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a capital for many pharaohs. And, and one of the reasons why we have most of the pyramids around that, that region. So mm -hmm. that's why it was very interesting for us to create mm -hmm. these places. Mm -hmm. And visually, it's, it's just amazing with that, yeah. the Temple of Ptah in the middle. It's, it's, we, we, don't, we haven't even built it as big as it was, mm -hmm. but maybe a bit higher than, yeah. than reality. <laughs> but not as, as large as it was. Very impressive place, with, full of canals, because we know that the, the course of the Nile has changed right. through time. It, it had an impact on the, mm -hmm. on the geography. So it's in uh, choosing, see the, choosing the, the sites of the pyramids, we knew that we wanted to have uh, Giza. Mm -hmm. Let's fast travel here, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to the pyramids. <laughs> we knew that we wanted to have the Great Pyramids. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, you can't go to Egypt without the pyramids. So yeah, it would be. Yeah. I tell people, like, no, you have to go to Giza. Yeah. It's sometimes a pain, but you still have to go. Yeah. Okay. Although, we were really excited because it still has the Electrum on the top. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Uh, we, They've never looked so nice before. Yeah. I know. I am. Um, with some quarrying down at the ground level, that's really nice. Yeah, that's that was a big challenge because you, you like we know from writings that probably the casing stones were were there. We're not sure in which state they were at mm -hmm. exactly at the time of Cleopatra. Uh, it's possible that the pyramid already has had been looted at the, at that time, and yep, so that probably. gives us a, a legitimacy to create an entrance for the character. Yeah. Otherwise, if we said like the pyramid is not accessible because it hadn't been looted yet, <laughs> uh, it yeah. might be frustrating for yeah. for people. I'm they sure it was be looted to... long before Cleopatra's time. Oh yeah. my God! Yeah, <laughs> that's a big dig here sign. Right Three here, intermediate you know, periods <laughs> before her. So, <laughs> uh, but I do like when you go to the Electrum. Some of it's kind of brushed off, or like pieces are falling off uh, because of reuse or yeah. just general time. Mm -hmm. And so, like you see here, like the the pyramidion, the, the, the capstone. We made we made it a bigger than it actually that. was. Yeah, see right there. Yeah. It's, it's uh, really cool. But like we thought, like it's gonna it's 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 the the, the capstone of the the greatest pyramid. Like let's make it great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's make it very visual and, and striking. So, so that because this is gonna be the landmark that people will see from pretty far away in the, on the map. And so it's very important that uh, we can, you know, we can see it and, and identify to it. Whereas for the oh, other ones, Sakara. yeah, yes, they have the bent pyramid too. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, you can on a clear day you can see from one yes. site to another, not yeah. this visibly, but it's, you can see the edge of the step pyramid from yeah. Giza yeah. when there's no smog, which is not often, <laughs> but. <laughs> No, it's not. But no, it, it was no. important to have to but show it is, these, yeah. in, to show that it's pyramids are not just Giza and, yeah. and Khufu, but mm -hmm. right, they would have been major monuments everywhere up and down that portion of the Nile that you could see almost all times. And, oh my and, and see like how monumental that was. I mean, um, here I mean we've used uh, the work that has been done by uh, uh, Jean Philippe Lauer, who was uh, who spent his whole life at Saqqara, basically. <laughs> uh, and so like the, I know that the, now the museum of the Step Pyramid is named after him because of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was important to show, to show all of these different pyramids, the Step Pyramid, the uh, North Red Pyramid, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bent Pyramid. 
and even uh, uh, it goes to Hawara in the background, or uh, Hawara mm -hmm. is uh, is even further in the right. in the Fayum. Uh, that would be uh, the um, Medum pyramid that we see in the back. Oh, right. And so, ex like this, this creating this world uh, at the same time that we were thinking about the experience of sharing more information regarding Egypt and history uh, was really the the the, the 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 foundation stone to create tours in this world. Mm -hmm. So the discovery tour is really about being able to explore, like we've been doing for for quite some time now, <laughs> being able to talk about Egypt for people that are that know Egypt. I mean, you can you can look at it, you can criticize it, you can use it as a mean to you know, to to have a discussion about something that you wouldn't see in 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 other uh, like uh, entertainment products or, or yeah. very accessible mediums like this one. Uh, but from knowing that for here that we have all of these pyramids, uh, it created it created a, an opportunity for us to create tours about the uh, the history of pyramid making, the the reason why they, they did it. And, and again, linking the pyramids as necropolis to pharaohs from Memphis. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, uh, it's a very powerful Yeah, it really way. shows how they're part of the same urban environment. We can even see here is uh, 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 Nitria, so uh, to the modern day uh, Wadi El Natron. Mm -hmm. So again, like we knew that talking yeah, that's about. That's a lot closer in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> that's, yeah. That's, a, that's not an easy drive out there sometimes. So, it's it was very important for us to have to show this because we wanted to talk about mummies, about uh, uh, necropolises, the, the the afterlife, and because we talk about mummification, we just we just needed to show uh, where the, the natron came from. Mm -hmm. So here we have, we show like different ways of extracting the natron that are, that are not all genuine to to that place. Some of the some of these techniques are used somewhere else in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, in even in Peru, because natron is basically salt, yeah. and so in Egypt, what they did over here was basically cutting slabs out of the seabed, and that was their salt. But here we also try to show if water was was uh, flowing, here we could uh, we could just evaporation ponds. Yeah. Take, create bats and then uh, remove the, uh, the natron from from here. I mean, I, th I think the the most shocking part for for any historian or Egyptologist or archaeologist looking at this is that these are all things that we've never seen in other ways. Yeah. Uh, I think it's yeah. it's shocking. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we've never been ex able to to see the past as much. We always. I think every scientist has a, has a perspective in their mind mm -hmm. of the things that they're, you know, they're digging, the sites that they're digging, the uh, representation that they're, they're having, uh, which is not always this, obviously. Yep. <laughs> this is based on, on trying to get as much information as possible, but everyone has a different perspective when they research, when they read a book. And so it's interesting here to, to see the contrast, sometimes to, uh, to think like the, the perspective that we've been having on Egypt, does it make any sense? Or are we are we in the right direction? I think it challenges our knowledge a little a little bit. No, we were remarking the other day, like when you go to the temples, it's so amazing for us to see it painted, because we've been to some of these sites and and we see them as they are now, and we have to use our imagination. But seeing the temples with the flags in it and fully painted and like the plaster is still on it is incredible for us, you know. <laughs> it's fun. That, uh, and what a different perception you get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, look how visible that detail is. Yeah. Let's go to the Sphinx. And um, let's try a tour. Okay. Because uh, we can, I mean, we can go around for quite a long time uh, talking about Egypt. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, here, the Sphinx, that was one of the challenges, as you mentioned, that we, like, color... Right. Colors were everywhere in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, the mm -hmm. Sphinx was colored. Yes. And and creating this game was was tough. And I hear it still has its nose in the game. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> Napoleon hasn't uh, yet no. uh, uh, <laughs> mythically not removed the nose because it was already. Uh, Although now before. they think it was actually um, an Arab sultan who did it. 
a yeah. Sufi. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, they, yeah, they're blaming someone besides Napoleon now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so mean. So. I know. <laughs> let's get into the tour oh, here. Okay. So, um, as I said, we've created this world. So we wanted to have tours that would talk about history of Egypt, uh, archaeology. In this case, we knew that we wanted to talk about the Sphinx because it's such an important landmark for, for Egypt. Yeah. The Great Sphinx of Giza. So we started a tour. We have, uh, we have tour stations like this one where the, the narrator is, is talking. We can, we can use the stick to, to go around, look at uh, different angles. Um, maybe I'll put the subtitles on so we can, we can see that. Uh, here we have a, a, a comparative image of of, uh, of Luxor, mm -hmm. and then it's it's very interesting just because we wanted to talk about sphinxes, like yeah. where they were at, what they were doing in Egypt, yeah. basically. So it's not just one major landmark, but a lot of different uh, land landmarks like this one. So, um, how do you choose these particular photos? Because this is. Pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a big challenge yeah. uh, for us to, when creating these tours, to have images that would uh, that would like explain Egypt, mm -hmm. even like additionally to the digital digital world. So we work with a, a, a museum association in France that's mm -hmm. called the uh, RMN. Mm -hmm. So they work with the Louvre, they work with the British Museum. Uh, so we uh, we uh, sourced a lot of images from from them, mm -hmm. and then we used other images from uh, sites like uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, mm -hmm. uh, in New York. So they have a massive collection, massive mm -hmm. digital collection also that we could that we could use. So uh, it's it's very interesting for us, but it was a big challenge because uh, we wanted to you know, acquire licenses. This yeah. is uh, <laughs> this is uh, uh, I mean this is done by a video game company, so mm -hmm. we we don't have. Uh, we don't have this, the same constraints as, as teachers do, sure. uh, for instance. Or budgetary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, all right, let's move on with the, uh, the Sphinx. So we'll, we'll have something interesting. Over the centuries, oh. enthusiasts and historians alike have wondered who built the Sphinx? Uh, for what purpose? The famous question. Mm. These questions remain unanswered. Several theories do exist, however. Some more than others. So the, 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 the goal for us is to be accessible for people who've either never, never been to Egypt, never heard about Egypt, uh, while at the same time making sure that we explain theories that are, that are very complex with words that are very simple. <laughs> so what we did is that we, uh, we after choosing the, the different types of tours that we wanted to talk about, the different types of subjects, uh, we asked uh, Egyptologists and historians to write the scientific aspects. Mm -hmm. So they wrote huge scientific texts, and then we narrowed that down to very uh, shorter sentences, <laughs> um, making sure that the language, the level of language, was was quite accessible from anyone, let's say, age 12 and, and older. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So the discovery tour is 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 meant for anyone to to be accessible. So. Uh, it's meant to be accessible for players of Assassin's Creed Origins that are now going into the Discovery Tour. They want to learn something that they haven't seen in the game. They, I mean, they've been, they've been going around the Sphinx and, and probably fighting hyenas and, and <laughs> other guards, but they, they, they are not being explained what was the Sphinx in the, in the game. Whereas here, it's really, take your time, uh, enjoy the view, look at the details, uh, compare the head of, of uh, Jedifrey, for instance, to the Sphinx. That's nice. Yeah, because you were saying, Bethany, that your students have been talking to you about this game and referencing it in class. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I have. I have so many weird, different, interested questions. They're like, you know, well, I thought I thought the Sphinx was repaired at such and such a date in the 18th dynasty. I'm like it was, and they're like, well, we couldn't see that in the game. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> It was probably also covered with plasters or things yeah. like that by the time of the Ptolemy's reconstruction. You couldn't see that detail, guys. Yeah, There's I mean, so many choices <laughs> that have to go into it. I mean, that is interesting because the different dynasties and the different rulers had different reconstructions of the old monuments. So Absolutely. how do you choose like which one to represent in the game? You know? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's really it's hard. Trying, trying to study yeah. 
like both uh, both the uh, here in the case of the Sphinx, the very modern research that have been done yes. in the last century uh, uh, over the you know the colors, over the the the, the, the size of the Sphinx, the geology yes. under the Sphinx. And, and try to understand that to make the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then looking at, uh, at sources of, uh, of, uh, of ancient geographers, where they're not always re reliable. No. And, and here, like, trying to understand that the Sayyid dynasties might have been you know, uh, doing some, some uh, reconstruction of these things, maybe yeah. putting new, new colors. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the things that we try to explain later, later on in the tour of the Sphinx. Uh, explaining where the Sphinx got its beard from, the statues in the middle, the, uh, the yeah. s some of the stelas My also. My Sphinx just learned about the Dream Stela, so <laughs> they'd be very excited to see this. Like, oh, that's Tutmosis the Fourth right there. <laughs> Let's go to the Dream Stela, actually. Right there. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow, it looks really great. Oh, wow. And so uh, what we did is that we took just a, a small part of, uh, of the Stela and uh, mm -hmm. wrote the translation back. But the, yeah, you can can actually look at it from quite low. Wow, close. that is beautiful. Wow. It's been, I mean, it, it, has, it has puzzled historians for, and Egyptologists for a long time because of the, you know, of the, the colors of the jewelries that they put on the, the uh, shoulders of the, of the mm -hmm. Sphinx also. We even, in this tour, we even talk about, uh, you know, crazy theories also about the Sphinx. Uh, mm -hmm. Could have been built before, it would have represented, uh, uh, you know, Anubis. So uh, it's uh, oh oh. I've had students like that to me already. Yeah. Oh, okay. We tried to debunk we, we some keep, of the myths. They keep too. up on it. They're like, yeah, it was originally meant to be an Anubis. Look at its back. It couldn't possibly be a lion. I'm like, that's oh, that's interesting. True. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like, Didn't uh, okay. <laughs> you tell me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, it, I mean, here is uh, what we see is uh, is another station that talks about the Sphinx, but mm -hmm. on the left of the screen we see that it, there's a mention of behind the, sc the scenes. So this means that uh, it talks about the, the way that we developed the game too. So maybe explaining something that as game developers we did that was that was different, or what what was the inspiration here to make the color, for instance. So here we talk about the importance of red and the link to to power, mm -hmm. and uh, and the fact that we believe that uh, like a couple of hundred centuries before Cleopatra they they painted the Sphinx anew. So this is why we uh, justified to have colors on the Sphinx. Although we don't know at the time of Cleopatra exactly what were the colors. I mean, what was the state of the colors? We knew that, we know that the red was most probably there because it's still there today. Yeah, you can still see yeah. some. And then, uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun opportunity for us to try to give some of the information like this. So here's that, it's, See, uh, it's a challenging, uh, challenging for the design to create a tour about the Sphinx because there are so many things you want to talk about, and then the Sphinx itself is not that big. <laughs> so, unless you have it's people like, go it's around, it's pretty big, but yeah, <laughs> well, it's yeah. the biggest Sphinx. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. And then uh, here, the so we used one of the uh, of the uh, sources oh. that is from uh, Auguste Mariette uh, from his own yeah. papers. So we asked the uh, the institute uh, in Paris to give us the access to this, so they they acknowledged. So it's very interesting because he's one of the most important uh, uh, finders or archaeologists that worked on the on the site of the Sphinx back in the days. So uh, quite interesting to be able to to show that to to te teach a little bit about uh, Egyptology. Sadly, we don't have a tour in Karanis that talks about your work. <laughs> Not oh, yet. Not no. yet. That would, that would be a <laughs> no. Please. Nobody would, don't. Nobody wants to hear. That would be a patch uh, with the original pictures of the <laughs> tent sites. Uh, nobody wants to hear about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly shocked it was chosen because the Fayum in yeah. general was economically important, but no one famous yeah, ever lived there. No. Or you know, it's, it's strange for a big game that this centered around, you know, Cleopatra's in this game. Yeah. Why is Karana so this game? Yeah. So I'm just tickled to see uh, it. <laughs> so so the, uh, the answer is that uh, creating the Fayum was very important for us because it was a very, very big uh, a Greek settlement site at the time of Cleopatra. Uh, let's move to, let's move to fa the Fayum. Okay. But it was mostly, I mean, agricultural and... Exactly. Yeah. Let's go to it's like visiting Iowa. You wouldn't yeah. do it unless you have a really good reason to visit Iowa. <laughs> 
So, so it was it was both very visually different from for us as, de as developers from the Nile. Mm -hmm. Then it was, I mean, it's it's epic. It's the the lake used to be much larger. It used to be a yeah. very uh, largely irrigated site. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. pharaohs of the uh, what was it, the New Kingdom, uh, mm -hmm. created dams yeah. over in the, in the Fayum, and then the time part of, of it you can still see, yeah. There you go. At the time of Cleopatra, they just, I mean, they just enhanced, and the Romans even did a, be a better job at irrigating until uh, uh, it went sour. But yeah. <laughs> otherwise, at, the, at that time, it was a very important site. And so gave us, uh, it gave us a, a unique opportunity to, to show also a very uh, special uh, uh, religion, mm -hmm. which is the cult of the, of the living <laughs> Sobek. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, right, let's, uh, so Crocodilopolis, the city, the yeah, crocodile. Yeah, seeing those flagpoles up or the electrum on the pylons, I mean, yeah, this is something. Yeah, it's really alive and beautiful. Yeah, we have to just use our imaginations for when we go to these sites and we can't. I mean, well, not that this one's Crocodilopolis, there. There's, it's yeah, city there's, now. Nothing there's nothing there. Nothing yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there now. But, you know, uh, <laughs> like. Karnak's not in this game, but this is similar architecture to Karnak, and absolutely, we just have to use our imaginations when we're there, and to see it, even if this is somewhat fictionalized, is amazing for us. You know, after spending years just in our minds, like, well, maybe it looked like this, <laughs> and maybe sketching yeah. it out, but seeing a 3D render of it is pretty amazing. I feel kind of justified. It's like, yeah, I wasn't yes. too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is totally right. I thought this all along, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we're of, like there's sand, there's sand brushing along the sphinx and yeah. covering part of it up, or those plants, <laughs> those plants would have been there, and that exactly. would have been a swamp right there. And, yeah, it's <laughs> oh, it's really. naturalistic detail exactly. on top of it all. So the the god Sobek is not in its lair, so <gasps> oh he, no, <laughs> he won't he won't uh, give us that uh, okay. unique opportunity to see him today. Okay, maybe another time. Okay, so, I do love that. I would crocodile. <laughs> it's just amazing to see the priests going and feed the crocodile <laughs> with, with honey and, and garlic. And, and I'm sure he cared about that. He's like, throw me a chicken. <laughs> I exact. I tried to make, uh, Paul and I did a walkthrough, and I tried to make him uh, pet the crocodile, <laughs> but apparently you can't do. Why are his eyes bleeding, though? He had a... He's like, I think the, the, uh, the mission designer who's put uh, the crocodiles in uh, albino. So yeah, he's, yeah, all, he's all white, white and but he had like blood coming out of his eye. It was because I, I, I think it's <laughs> someone is. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, someone is poisoning the crocodile. That's awful. Oh, no. <laughs> he's a god. You can't do that to him. People have no respect. I for know. Crocodile it's gods terrible nowadays. Rude. If you live in Fayum, you better have respect for the crocodile god. That's the only thing keeping you safe from the actual crocodile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's probably a Roman. Let's be honest. Oh, it probably it's is probably a Roman. Roman. Or even Greek. <coughs> yeah. That's true. Oh, there's a... Um, as we move on to... To get to uh, Karanis, we'll pass uh, <laughs> in between uh, the Biamu Colossi. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I noticed they're here, and I was like, "That's interesting." Well, it's very, very. Uh, they took, they took a vacation north. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it's they're. Uh, I mean, every, the only thing that's left of them is like uh, uh, some some, some stones <laughs> yeah. in, in real life. Yeah. And here it's uh, you know, it's just it's just a nice way, yeah. without without reconstructing them fully because they're mm -hmm. they're lost. It was yeah. just a nice way to be able to show that. Uh, how do you choose which art pieces to put in the game versus... Like the obelisks, all the obelisks in the game are pretty much the same obelisk repeated over and over. And yeah. there's an Apollo statue that's repeated a lot. Um, how did you choose which art pieces to display and recreate throughout the game? It's a very organic <laughs> procedure yeah. where um, we define that we're going to make a game about Egypt, then we define the different uh, major cities, mm -hmm. uh, major locations, then we, we go from very you know, wide research into, mm -hmm. we narrow down to the more details, so mm -hmm. creating, uh, creating uh, temples. Uh, we've seen it from the temples, I mean, it's always the same texture that you see on the temple pylons most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. So obviously it wouldn't make sense if you, if you 
if you have this always the same same uh, texture, the same bar relief everywhere. Uh, but uh, but we have a capacity to generate content, to create houses, to create diversity mm -hmm. uh, up, to, up to some extent. If there's if it's something that we're going to see in, into details, sometimes we'll go into and make it uh, unique. Mm -hmm. and, but most of the time, the things that you see around are generated. Uh, pretty much everywhere in Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> some things are unique to some areas, like uh, uh, I think here, what do we have here? Um, like, let, let's say we have a... Flamingos. Are those flamingos? Yeah, we had flamingos around. Mm -hmm. Or here we have uh, a shadoof. I mean, you'll find them everywhere yes, because yeah. They're, yeah. It, they're supposed to be everywhere in, in Egypt. Right. So they're not unique to one, one location. Uh, but some, oh, crocodiles moving around. Uh, s some things like pottery, instead of putting it everywhere in the, in the country, we mm -hmm. created one village that's really focused on pottery. Uh, or some flowers will be everywhere in the game, or mm -hmm. sometimes uh, they'll be sp specific to one location. Okay. Like uh, uh, dip different sorts of cereals are closer to Alexandria, mm -hmm. uh, whereas here, I'm not sure exactly everything that we have, but we probably have linen. Uh, we, uh, what are these? The yellow flowers. There is so much diversity that I don't recall everything. Mm -hmm. But the, the way to choose them is that we uh, so we look into uh, lists that are made by by Egyptologists, mm -hmm. and then we look into how how. It creates variety in terms of colors, okay. in terms of, uh, of, okay. uh, of okay. uh, activities also. So yeah. having poppy flowers, for instance, is interesting because we can talk about that into missions. We can mm -hmm. show people uh, uh, creating uh, potions with, with uh, mm -hmm. poppy, for instance. And we got uh, the wheels that are still in the Fayum today. Yeah. Oh, there's a big restaurant near them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your restaurant in town? Which one? Water wheels. I don't think I went there. Oh, no? Wait. It's near the city? Right downtown. It's in, in Fayum, right in the middle of downtown. Oh, yeah? Oh. Oh, yeah, I did go. It's like the only place we ever stop and eat. <laughs> well, that's a rare sight, too. It, uh, olives. Oh, the olive tree. Pretty. Yeah. Let's, can we look at them? Well, Kronos has all these olive presses, and we're wondering exactly where they were growing all the trees. We haven't found a lot of evidence of orchards. They're probably under modern fields, so we'll never find them. <laughs> but the well, was definitely producing a lot of olive oil. It's uh, that's you know, some. Uh, it was a very fun way for us to illustrate how the Greek presence could you know, could have consequences mm -hmm. on the la on the landscape mm -hmm. uh, in many different aspects. So there's a there's a temple. I think it's in it's in uh, Saknu Payonessos where uh, mm -hmm. Egyptians have uh, uh, vandalized the Greek temple. Ooh. Because they don't recognize Serapis. Uh, oh, and, uh, I see. Because he's a Greek version. So it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting way for us to talk about mature subjects, even though it's mm -hmm. on the purpose of, of entertainment and fun. Sure. Cool. All right, here's one for you. Are they praying at a little shrine there? Yeah. It's... Yep, it seems like... Oh, oh sorry, I've, cool. I've, I've pushed oh, wow. her. I think she's... Oh, they're praying Quite obsessed. a little celibate. Aww. All right, let's... Oh, and you can pray too? Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. So whenever you have these white circles uh, in the Discovery Tour, you can actually engage in them. Uh -huh. So depending on the type of character, you cannot always... Uh, uh, oh, oh I, I, see. I picked up her place. Oh. <laughs> super happy. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, you can engage into these. So whether, uh, wow. as I said here, it looks, looks awkward because he's, yeah, <laughs> he's a, a Greek guy. <laughs> Greek uh, worshipping Sovek. Um, mm -hmm. But we, we could we could change and uh, we could take another character, for instance. It would make. Hey, he could be of mixed sense. heritage. I yeah, don't know if he worships Sovek. Yeah, that's yes, <laughs> indeed. Oh, all right. Let's. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, let's yeah. worship Sovek a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and so we see a lot of of influences from um, from both uh, Baralia from from archives from from Egypt, but also from. Uh, thinking about maybe more uh, uh, Indian worshipping from today, Himalayan worshipping. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the fact okay. to have flowers uh, a little bit everywhere. I mean, it's 
as, as game designers, we have to, to create something that's visually striking, right. where, are the, where are the, the sources are not as describing as we want sometimes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we know that they're burning incense, so that's why you have uh, incense burning beside. We know that they were giving offerings, but most of the, ti the time, the details of the offerings or the way that it's presented is not always uh, very, uh, very... What is it off to the side of the statue? Is it bread or lamps, or what is it on the altar? On the altar here? One, yeah. Is one side incense, and then the that's other side... Okay. Have, uh, yeah. yeah, candles. Okay. But then, the other side. But the other are side. Are they like little terracottas? It's a good question. Looks like uh, more petals. Yeah, like okay. yeah, bowls with uh, flower petals. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of pottery pretty much everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Ancient Egypt. I made a lot is there of a function in the game yeah. where you step on a broken piece and hurt your foot? Because that oh. still happens to me all the time. Oh, no. Oh. Famous ostracons and pottery <laughs> shards. Pottery shards are everywhere. They're very dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. And I think a lot of people don't realize, uh, archaeologists, we tend to throw a lot of pottery shards out. Uh, we don't nearly. We don't keep them. Oh, no. <laughs> we just <laughs> museums check them are, out. <laughs> museums are, are so full of that in their collections. Bags, yeah. bags full, kilograms each day of yeah. pottery that we record and then have to yes. chuck. rebury in a hole yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but we don't keep it. No, unless it's diagnostic. I mean, there's nothing. If it's a yeah. chunk from the center of a pot, you can't tell anything from it. And so you just kind of. Eh. I, I like that to. You make to, a note of what it's made out yeah. of. And then, and then, <laughs> By weight, Bye. not even by piece. Yeah. You know, in museums, the, the thing that you will see in all museums the most are, uh, are uh, artworks called bowl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you go into a lot of museums and you look at the title and it's always like bowl, bowl, bowl. <laughs> so it's pretty so funny. What I'm telling you is that is the one nice bowl they found. Exactly. Whereas they yes. <laughs> at least 15 broken bowls that didn't make the cut, you know? <laughs> all right, some uh, winnowing. So even even here, like in terms of technology, it's it's complex because all of these people have to <laughs> they have to go from their home, they have to eat. Uh, uh, everyone you see on, on in the game has an agenda. They have like they're they're very busy people for ancient yeah. Egypt. They either they're eating, they're sleeping, or they have to go to their to work. Uh, so to the either to the fields to plow, or they may be uh, they, they they can go on a on a canal, uh, work on the irrigation. Uh, trying to uh, dig out some some uh, some dirt, or here he's uh, guiding his ox. <laughs> at some point so during the day. So if we were visiting at night, would we see different activities from the people? Would we see them hanging out on their porches and things? Yeah. In the evenings. Uh, yeah, they they really uh, they'll they'll maybe they'll be at uh, they'll be drinking with some friends, talking. They'll be uh, maybe one of them will. Uh, Will uh, take his uh, magic flute from his uh, outfits and oh. play flute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Maybe they could be, uh, yeah, working in the fields yeah. like this. So. Well, she probably wouldn't do this, but yeah. Yeah, she's not dressed she's like she would well do that very often, <laughs> no. right? Oof, that's so why. You can't <laughs> tell like yeah. She's already tired. Uh, like, I don't do this. <laughs> yeah, you see, she was trying to to uh, remove uh, flies away. Yeah. So it's something that you, I mean, in a video game like this, you don't mm -hmm. see really uh, like the flies because cause it's yeah. just too small for yeah. what you would see on screen. <laughs> but uh, as, as a team, it just struck us looking at, at you know, at sources from Egypt that like, oh, yeah, yeah flies everywhere. Yeah, yeah, there are. <laughs> and like in, uh, you don't oh, necessarily God. see flies around people, around Egyptians when they're idealized on their tombs. No. <laughs> no. Trying to chase away the that flies. Is not, yeah. But when we go into <laughs> recording... They're everywhere, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are terrible. <laughs> they are disgusting. Yeah. Uh, when we go with actors, then we have to tell them that information because they're in, like, you know, they're in that, that big empty room and they have to imagine <laughs> that they're in Egypt. They yeah. haven't seen the game yet. Having a slot. Yeah. So it's it's here you see like most probably there were never horses copper horses like this around Fayum. No. Uh, <laughs> again, Fayum. No. But <laughs> there were very strong representation for Greeks. Uh, mm -hmm. Horses represented manhood and power because they're mm -hmm. let's let's be honest they were quite uh, macho. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, and here it just reinforces that that idea of, of here they are. Uh, Horses were very important for them, so they, you have stables, you have, uh, oh, you have a party. Oh, oh, let's see a party. Okay. So, again, it just stre strengthens the fact that you have Egyptians Greek in, people in, in, the, yeah. in the field, and then these Greek settlers yeah. are just enjoying the life beside while, uh, you know, collecting uh, <laughs> yeah. the goods from, the from their... Egyptian, uh, yeah. yeah. From the native okay. Egyptian, so... It's interesting oh. for us to be able to talk about this. So that was the yeah, that was the statue you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, the Apollo, the Apollo statue. Playing oh, the Oh, he's sitar. been covered up. I see. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's, he's, he's suited he up for uh, for a teen-rated game here yes, with the Discovery Tower. I see. Uh, and so the one that's actually on display, I think it's in the British Museum. Yeah. It's it's broken, so you had to reconstruct it digitally. Like, how do you decide, or how do you figure out how to reconstruct some of these statues? or which ones to reconstruct based on. So we, we look at different statues that are very interesting uh, and iconic mm -hmm. here. It's yeah, the Apollo uh, playing the, the yeah. sitar. Uh, that, that was found in Sarin that we have in the yeah. game. So it's funny because we legitimately could have had, had, have had him in, the, in Sarin. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> because we're not making like 2,000 different statues, yeah. we, we still have maybe, I, I'm not sure the number, but a couple, maybe uh, over 100 statues in the oh game. My God. And so uh, to recreate them, and they're quite very detailed. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, the, the level of quality is very detailed. Yeah. So recreating all of them is, is based on, uh, on our interest, on the, the visual quality of these statues. Mm -hmm. And so here he was missing the arm in reality. Well, yeah. we just had an, an arm that, that made a lot of sense. Uh, and then here he gets his way into, uh, into the Fayum because it shows that Greeks are importing statues, mm -hmm. uh, Greek statues, because they're not making them in the Fayum directly. So, sure. We're you know, we're trying to create these, these yeah. small setups <laughs> to talk about uh, ancient lives. So they see the the fun part of what we're doing right now is that we're free to explore and go everywhere. We had no pressure of of you know of conflict, mm -hmm. and uh, that was something that we we wanted to do for a long time. Um, I mean. Launching a Discovery Tour is, is 12, uh, 11 years after launching the first AC game. Mm -hmm. We've been playing with history for quite some time uh, with passion. Obviously, we always had in mind to create a game for fun, for entertainment. So we've been playing with uh, the Crusades, the Italian Renaissance, uh, the American Revolution, French Revolution, for instance. And so uh, these games were very successful. People have fun playing, mm -hmm. playing them. And uh, one thing that we realized is that they the players engage into history in a very different way while playing a video game like this one mm -hmm. and then they would with other mediums like books or movies and so uh, we felt like ever since the first AC game we should do more we should do more than, than the game we we wanted to explain all the work that we do on recreating these sites explaining history because it's not something that's always obvious when you play the, the game itself mm -hmm. And so with the Discovery Tour, uh, what we did is that we were basically making this world accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, at this, that was the first step for us. And then at the same time, we wanted to do tours that would talk about history, about culture. Mm -hmm. So we already had the first glimpse of that ever since uh, AC2, Assassin's Creed 2 in 2009. So we had the Animus database. Uh, that were short articles in the menu oh. that you could, whenever you, you would go in front of the Notre Dame, for instance, it would talk about the monument itself. Mm -hmm. But it was always on the layer of narrative from the game. Mm -hmm. We could never be, you know, removed from from the narrative of the game to explain, mm -hmm. like, here we made uh, the, the cathedral of Notre Dame, but it's yeah. like, this is accurate, this is not accurate, yeah. because it wouldn't make sense <laughs> in the universe uh, of, of the character. Uh, so creating the Discovery Tour as a separate game from mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed Origins was that unique opportunity to, you know, to be free to do whatever we wanted. So it was yeah. really a dream project for a lot of us. Uh, personally, ever since I joined Ubisoft in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something like this. Mm -hmm. I, I like that we do a lot of research for yeah. all of our games. We work with historians, with consultants. Uh, we're trying to be serious, even though that was, it was for fun. Mm -hmm. And here we have the opportunity to explain history, to use the same, the same tool that engages people, mm -hmm. the digital reconstitution, and still 
uh, well, this time make it interesting with the digital digital world, but make it uh, interesting because of the discovery tours also. So having these 75 tours that explain all of the different aspects. Ooh, oh <laughs> that you can see the snakes from, oh, from okay. pretty close, but wow. they're not dangerous to you. <laughs> uh, it's it was it was uh, see just having this come out is is a dream project mm -hmm. for for a lot of us. For me personally, for Jean Guedon, the creative mm -hmm. director, uh, he's been he's been dreaming about doing this also <laughs> for a very long time, longer than I, I think. Um, <laughs> And then just being able to release that is is mm -hmm. is amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's um, it's also a consequence of both having players very engaged into mm -hmm. uh, history, but also teachers and, and professors ever since the first Assassin's Creed saying like, would you consider making a version for us, right. a version that would be accessible into classrooms? Mm -hmm. uh, because we, I mean, we don't we don't want to chase uh, someone with all the students in the classroom, for instance. <laughs> uh, we want to focus on archaeology or yeah, architecture yeah, yeah, yeah. and history. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was something that we had in our mind uh, for a long time. We've been, we've been in contact with universities, with teachers uh, for many years now because we've been asked to produce a lecture yeah. to explain how we work with Assassin's Creed, what are our sources, how mm -hmm. we work with history, how we do discrepancies. And so all of this was in the back of our head and thinking like, all right, Maybe that's what we should explain if we were to make yeah. a, you know, a separate mode to talk about about uh, about history, to talk about Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, making it accessible in terms of, you know, of navigation. I mean, it's it's fairly easy. It's uh, we've removed any any difficulty of any challenge of navigation, but you mm -hmm. can still go everywhere. Uh, the tours are are easy to follow, mm -hmm. and then uh, the the level of language also is is quite accessible. So. We have our own uh, six hours of content. Okay. <laughs> wow. So it's, uh, it's a bit... Wow. And just the walkthrough is six hours? Yes. Oh, wow. So uh, in the Discovery Tour. So okay. uh, you can go in a map here. Uh, oh. And let's, let's move to Alexandria, for instance, just okay. very quickly. All of these blue icons that we see on screen uh -huh. are uh, tours, tours that talk about do. Alexandria. So. Here we can have a tour about the Great Library of okay. Alexandria. So it's a dedicated yeah. tour that lasts mm -hmm. seven minutes and really talks about both the monument itself, mm -hmm. talks about uh, the people that were in the, in the library yeah. and, and science also at the time of, of Alexandria. So uh, it's, it's really a dream project, oh. a, a heart. No. Hard project oh. for us <laughs> to get this Yay, out. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so we, we, we never wanted to replace teachers. That was, mm -hmm. that would, that's not the goal. Yeah. Uh, the goal is really to give a tool for people to mm -hmm. learn about Egypt. If people want to use it, uh, sure. well, that's fine. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. if, if, uh, if they prefer to use other means to teach history for, for, for mm -hmm. teachers, for instance, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we just wanted to do the, like, this project for, for ourselves for fun. Yeah. And then <laughs> at the same time, uh, you know, giving something that's, that's useful and interesting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is easier to get students into history when they have a uh, personal connection to it. So here, even if it's a fictionalized exactly. story, they can walk through and have some sort of uh, their own interaction with ancient Egypt, even if it's all false. But it helps at least get them in the classroom and at no, least get true. them interested. It's yeah, no, it's true. That, you know, they, drag. It really is. It's yeah. like, oh, now we spark their interest. Here's yeah. where it diverges. Yeah. And they'll be more patient hearing the differences if they have an emotional connection or investment in the story or whatever. So exactly. Yeah. So this is Karanis. <laughs> this is, oh. <laughs> oh. So this is uh, this is the way we've represented Karanis so, in the game. Much uh, different. It, it's uh, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I know. Very different. <laughs> well, so it's a lot more than we've ever seen. That's uh, for sure. Uh, so we tried to reproduce wow. different different sites <laughs> around the Fayoum. <laughs> Some of them, with uh, we used a lot of you know, archives that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we, we we could access to. Some of them it was a bit uh, yeah. more difficult because yes. archives are uh, more scarce. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the case with Karanis. Karanis, yeah. Well, Bethany is the one that is well, doing all, all the archives. All we have for Karanis is first century AD and. Mm -hmm. On. We have only like three whole buildings that might be from the Ptolemaic period at all. 
So you can basically make up this time period and I won't argue with you because, I mean, I think it looks clearly richer than I believe Karanis was. Yeah. Like, if there's ever yeah. anything that nice in Karanis, I'm heartbroken that it's not there now. But, <laughs> and there's no evidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no evidence for anything nice. Wow. Certainly no world cap <laughs> pillars. Wow. <laughs> yeah, here there's a, I'd say there's a lot of uh, liberties that we're taking. Yes. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. It's the only place in the game where we have colossal statues yeah. Uh, <laughs> as, as much inside so, a uh, temple. So Alexandria doesn't have things like this because that's the level I'm thinking. Like this looks yeah. like some really classy well, Alexandria you, stuff. You would have one statue in, in the end, but you, a monumental statue, but you would, you would never in the rest of the game see other statues around. So here it's really, it was to uh, reinforce the idea of, of, uh, of Greek colonialism. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're taking over. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. uh, uh, it, are there Egyptian yeah, there's the Egyptian yeah, statues are right there. Very Ramsey-eyed yeah. statues. So yeah, yeah Karanis is, is, let's say it's, it's the right name. Yes. And uh, it's situated it at the right place. Look like that. I will say, when you go to the people's homes, that does look very authentic. Okay. Um, <laughs> that starts looking very much like the Karanis we were at. <laughs> okay, yeah. And then if I compare... More uh, daily life Karanis. Yes, so. yeah. <laughs> Sokmilpayunesos, which is a bit uh, uh -huh. for the west, is closer to what we know because, because we actually have maps of constitutions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and some of those mud brick walls are still there. Like, we took a trip out to go yeah. see them. Really? And they're like these 40 foot mud brick walls that are. Oh, e yeah. I mean, they're Super so crazy. The, it was a walled city. And, yeah. But Sokmilpayunesos is the, is the temple town. It completely revolves around the temple, whereas Karanas. Anything excavations really focused on there is just the town, the people, mm -hmm. whereas the temples are almost nondescript little things compared yeah. to all that data, data we've got from the houses. Oh, you got a little so. causeway over there. Yeah, so we, we, nice. uh, we talked earlier about, uh, about naming sites in the game also, because all of these places have names in the game where, mm -hmm. when you access them. Uh, obviously, some sites we couldn't, we couldn't give. I mean, all the love we wanted to recreate them as faithfully as we did for, let's say, Memphis and Alexandria. Mm -hmm. But we still wanted to give them the name of the place they're situated at. Sure. So it's sometimes with, uh, we had to be very creative when sites were created after the time period of Cleopatra. Mm -hmm. uh, or like if the only names that we had were uh, Arabic names. We tried to avoid mm -hmm. these. Yeah. Uh, while still talking about the sites that we recreated. Well, and some of these sites are still being excavated, uh, and there is no record, published record for you to look at. So uh, even if, I mean, yeah, we were giggling at the temple, but but there aren't any real published archaeological records for you to easily access for to recreate Karanis perfectly yeah, Certainly here. not for this time period, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, so even if we giggle, I mean, the, your task of recreating these cities that are pretty much lost and still being researched is mm -hmm. monumental. So now I can tell right away that must be Sokhnapayonesos because that actually looks like the map. From, yeah. Yeah, from the yeah. top view, you know yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. There's the giant causeway <laughs> and everything. Yep, the causeway. I mean, there's and no walls the around the, the city, but it's... The west. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It, it's... Uh, yeah, uh, the causeway still semi exists, it's and it goes so out long, to the. Though. It's incredibly long. Oh, we walked they, on it. They just published it again. They yeah. did a map of every single stone of the entire existing causeway, and it goes That's almost all the way to the lake. You know. Yeah, uh, I think it does here actually. There's yeah, there's the lake. Yeah. You go pretty close to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not as burning as as it is right today. Mm -hmm. Like I know that now, if you yeah. go into uh, Birkit Karun in that lake. You'd like, it, it will burn your, uh, yeah, your clothing. Oh, yes. Because it's go. so salty, salty. Yeah. You're warned not to go anywhere near it, frankly. It's, it's yeah. not a pleasant lake anymore. Mm -mm. <laughs> so that's a very big, that was a big challenge for us, is recreating a, a, you know, a world that was so far remote and so, mm -hmm. so different from, from anything we know today. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it was a very fun challenge <laughs> for everyone. Yeah. Um. I mean, definitely when you go to the area of Karanis, that's just the regular people's houses, like over towards this area, it is, yeah. it is more authentic to what we studied. And uh, whoa, oh, what? what happened? What? <laughs> What's, uh, what, who is this lady? Like, oh, she's uh, got a Bluetooth? <laughs> uh, we're, we're cosplaying you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wish we had Bluetooth capabilities at Karanis. <laughs> I don't know that I'd wear a leather jacket I, in, in it, the it was desert. It was very hot. Uh, well, it keeps them warm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeps, uh, we you, did wear pants moist. like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had pants and boots like that. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a tool belt like that. That would have made it so much easier. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Le Leila is one of the accessible characters yeah. that we have. It's, it was you see that that reaction is just so valuable for us, <laughs> for me at least, because yeah. that was the thing that we had in our mind. Of, I mean, like when you play with these characters, yeah. it's just it's, uh, priceless. It's just yeah. so fun. <laughs> it again, it like it brings you back to the fact that this is in, in the end, it's a video game. Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's. Um, we mentioned we mentioned uh, Hawara. Let's try to go to see Hawara. Another site that is like, uh, unlike Alexandria and Memphis, we don't have that much infor information on Hawara, but we know it was so famous for, yeah. because of the supposedly famous yeah. labyrinth. Mm -hmm. All right, so as we make our way, um, you see that the interesting part of being a, oh, oh crocodile. Wow. Uh, a, a historian working on, on the Assassin's Creed franchise is is the ability as a, as a, as a scientist, as a who has a scientist background, to be able to use research tools to uh, to help team envision these places that are lost. Mm -hmm. So I graduated back in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, as Ubisoft was looking to hire a full-time historian. Mm -hmm. So they already had uh, they already had worked with historians before, uh, and on the different games uh, before Assassin's Creed 3. And uh, they wanted someone that was going to be there full time and make to make the link with with uh, external consultants, with professors, for instance, that uh, that couldn't be at Ubisoft with the team all time. So I started with uh, AC3. That was the American Revolution. That was my background, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, colonial era. So th very far from Egypt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in the northeast of America. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to be uh, to work in, in museums in Montreal. To be uh, okay. I was a, I was a, a guide a guide tour okay. uh, back then, mm -hmm. and then I was just fresh out of university when Ubisoft was looking to oh. hire someone. Wow. So it was it was a big challenge at first. Yeah. Uh, again, like you from from trying to seek the truth in university yeah. in research. And then moving into a, a company where the truth is interesting, but fun is even more interesting right. <laughs> uh, within these video games was uh, was challenging at first. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, it, it was it was uh, it was interesting to see how how we make these games, how production is is very different from usual research. Mm -hmm. uh, where uh, here when we work on Assassin's Creed, uh, visuals are so important to the team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can. I mean, we here for ancient Egypt. We bought books about uh, police force in ancient Egypt. Oh, so we yeah. have two books mm -hmm. from Oxford that are like 500 pages yeah. each, no image, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that's still very useful. Mm -hmm. But I don't expect the texture artist to yeah. look into that <laughs> to make a texture of, of you know for for uh, guards in ancient Egypt. Yeah. So, so do you have people who then read the books and then send them like cliff notes essentially? Of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So we have a huge database where we put everything that we oh. find, like images, movies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, references, books. Mm -hmm. uh, we digitize a lot of books also to make them accessible because we have, I mean, we work on Assassin's Creed in Montreal, but also in other uh, studios of Ubisoft worldwide. So okay. in, in Singapore and here mm -hmm. in Sofia also uh, in Bucharest. So, a lot of places where we have to share the same database, yeah. but they don't have access to the same information. So it's it's very useful, and so yeah, I do a lot of reading and then <laughs> trying to you know condense <laughs> these books into like two or three sentences yeah. sometimes. Oh, oh God! <laughs> and so you never know, and when doing research, what you're gonna end up with. I mean, every time I'm surprised how how historians have done a, so much interesting work regarding Egypt. I mean, right. here we have to look into information. Like for everything, for yeah. plants, flowers, uh, for how people f uh, were fishing, what kind of, of, of tools they were using. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. it, there are so many things to, to to look at. I mean, even looking at the lights, the lighting of Egypt. Uh, oh. Our team used a NASA yeah. data, mm -hmm. uh, so they were they trying to reproduce the stones, the reflection of the sun, mm -hmm. uh, the course of the sun in the, in the sky. 
the constellations also to try trying to understand what Egyptians knew about constellations and how we can play with that in the narrative. Okay. So would you look at like star maps from Seti the first tomb or? Well, we'll look at the Dendera okay. uh, <laughs> map. So that's why it's also featured somewhere hid <laughs> hidden in the game. Yeah. Uh, obviously it doesn't belong there, but it's it was a nice way to to explain to people the constellations. Mm -hmm. And so in, the, in Assassin's Creed Origins, there are some uh, gameplays regarding constellations okay. that are linked to mm -hmm. ancient Egyptians' beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, here in the Discovery Tour, we didn't go so much in that, into that direction because, okay. because it was already covered in the game. But mm -hmm. most of the things that we hadn't talked about, we were trying to, to go, go back to okay. it in, the, in the Discovery Tour. And then how do you reach out to different professors and uh, historians in order to get your information for the games? <laughs> so we, uh, we ask Ubisoft to contact them first. Okay. Because <laughs> if, it, if it comes from me, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I just tell them straight away the setting of the game. And mm -hmm. so we contact them. Uh, we ask if they're interested in collaborating. We try mm -hmm. to explain to them also what we're doing, obviously. Uh, we're not approaching this saying to them like this is going to be a hundred percent accurate. We try right. to yeah. to say like the more information you're going to be able to give us, the more likely it's going to be in the game featured right. and and well represented. So working with, uh, for instance, historian Evelyn Ferrand, who she's a special specialist of the uh, Oasis at the time of Cleopatra, and so she said you guys are crazy to work on this time period because it's, yeah. it's not that well documented yeah. uh, and uh, it's, it's very complex. Yeah. Uh, for, for us though, we, we could see that that time period was rich because it was showing so many different aspects of Egypt mm -hmm. at the moment. But it's, uh, so when we approach historians, that's what we try to tell them, we try to explain them the, the process and, and try to make them understand what is, again, what is interesting for, for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, we, we want to be truthful to, to the most important aspects. Like, I don't think we would do something that would, that would make absolutely no sense mm -hmm. uh, for, for Egyptians as, as much yeah. as possible. And so I know you, you mentioned that you got an Egyptologist working in Montreal for this game, but I, there's like a pirate version of this game. And so how do you find like an expert on pirates? How do you find, you know? Or like American historians, they always argue about what what actually happened. How do you, <laughs> yeah? How do you um, how do you deal with conflicts in people's research or uh, theoretical opinions that they give you? <laughs> we, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's it's nicely put because that's that's the complex part with history is, is it's it's not like mathematics. Yeah, it's very subjective. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so uh, with every game, we work with lots of different experts. So here on, on with, uh, with Ancient Egypt, we work with almost uh, a dozen experts. Okay. So in all different aspects, uh, uh, you know, temples, uh, yeah. hieroglyphics, mm -hmm. language, Greek language. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of them, we either contact them because of their, of their publications, because mm -hmm. of their uh, field of expertise, mm -hmm. or because we get to know them by, by, because they've contacted us before or, or something mm -hmm. like this. Okay. Uh, so every game has a set of, of consultants. The American Revolution, yeah. we had uh, uh, François Fustenberg, who used to be a former teacher of mine oh, wow. in colonial history. <laughs> Uh, okay. And then it, it was it was very interesting to work with him because he was uh, a specialist of George Washington. Oh, okay. So uh, in, in a game featuring uh, George Washington, it made so much sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, and then that, that's 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 how we work with with these people. Uh, it's uh, trying to trying to get their their uh, you know their answers. Uh, as, as honest as possible. Yeah. Uh, working on, on, I mean, work, working on subjects that are sometimes very sensitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, the American Revolution talks yeah. about genocide. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. we, we worked with uh, uh, Native American consultants. Okay. Mon so oh, wow. the game being based uh, was made in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So our studio is, is located around about like five kilometers away from the next Mohawk village. Okay. Uh, <laughs> close to Montreal. So yeah. it made so much sense that we, we asked for their for their uh, their perspective, oh. even though it, it wasn't necessarily to understand the historical perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were not asking to work with their historians, but more to understand their the sensitivities uh, towards their culture. Mm -hmm. For instance, they they told us that 
you know, uh, ritual masks is something that is, that is very sacred, so we shouldn't feature that in the game. Uh, the fact that names are unique, so the, yeah. the name of the character of the game is unique, and it's this, the, the name of, of one of the sons of our consultant mm -hmm. that he gave us, because he said like, it would be an honor if you could use his name in the game, but oh. otherwise we, didn't, we wouldn't feel <laughs> yeah. comfortable that yeah. you use another name because that okay. would be someone's real name. Yeah, and yeah, of course. So oh, that's it's, great. It's, it's really nice to, uh, like, yeah. as an historian, to, have, yeah. to work in a company where that matters. Yeah, like to work inclusivity with that, matters. Yeah. That's really cool. They, they understand that? Oh, no, yeah. I missed the... I miss the track here, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> can't um, die. So then, uh, how do you deal with uh, uh, different races within this game? Because I mean, this yeah. is a really uh, tumultuous time for race and identity in Egypt. So, so for us, it was and that features really highly in the game story, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's about the conflict of colonialism and yeah. imperialism and all these different racial conflicts. So. For us, it's, it's always a matter of, of doing our research first on, on, on history, on, as you mentioned, uh, looking at different perspectives of different historians, so mm -hmm. trying to understand historiography, mm -hmm. uh, looking at scientific data as much as possible. I mean, what, is, uh, what are the roots of people living in, in Egypt? Mm -hmm. Who is living in Egypt at the time of Cleopatra? And then, so we know that 99% of, of, of uh, the people, inhabitants at the time of Cleopatra are native Egyptians yeah. at that time. And then there's a, a minority of Greek settlers that are owning everything mm -hmm. uh, or a lot of things. But at the same time, there are also temples and high priests that are very, uh, very powerful yes. still. So we could, we could understand that and play with that mm -hmm. in the game and understand that uh, theology is something that is very strong at the time, yeah. uh, theocracies. Uh, and so understanding what, what is the relationship between uh, the, the family of Cleopatra, the crowd of Alexandria, who are like, they have, of course, they, they see the, the king or queen as, as their ruler, but it's, they see also that ruler as their local ruler, not just like Egypt's ruler and the other uh, regions around that used to be properties of the Ptolemies. And then how, how is Rome reacting to this, the fact that Cleopatra's father is totally indebted to Rome, yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. they yeah. actually brought him back to the throne, he mm -hmm. bribed everyone. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, yeah, Ptolemy is not the greatest people. So it's really about trying to get as much information as possible, like it's not, not just the, about the landmarks, but about the people of Egypt, the, mm -hmm. the famous people, the, you know, the outcomes of mm -hmm. important moments like this mm -hmm. one. So this is pretty much how we choose settings also for most of our games is that we look into what are the outcomes of, of important moment, of okay. pivotal moments oh, in history. Yeah, okay. So that, hence the American Revolution, the yeah. French Revolution. Are those, are those Ibis eggs? I guess so, crocodile. Oh, crocodile? Yeah. Um, it's a matter of crocodile. And, and so <laughs> how do you reconcile, like most of the historical records we have on Cleopatra are written like 100 years later and by a Roman or a Greek, or by the people who hated her. From exactly. The start, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, Egyptian culture, uh, the genders may not have been completely equal, but women did have a lot of uh, their own individuality and power, and uh, Greek and Roman. Yes. You know. Greek and Roman were uh, very patriarchal, uh, basically the antithesis of each other. So you had these historians writing hundreds of years after she died, A, and B, they would see her as a complete threat because that was the antithesis to their society. So how do you separate th their version of history versus what may have actually been true? <laughs> So it's it's a shame because in this uh, in this uh, demo build that we have right now, I cannot show you the, the but there's a tour about uh, Egyptian households, oh, and wow. there are tours about Cleopatra also, yeah. and uh, where we try to explain the way that we uh, interpreted history in Assassin's Creed and the way that I mean Assassin's Creed Origins or the Discovery Tour is 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 a nice display of how we see history in 2000 in 2018 mm -hmm. let's say yeah. so the way that we interpret history is that we are aware at this point that Cleopatra has been uh, has been depicted by her enemies mostly uh, mm -hmm. we don't have her own writings uh, it's mostly everything that has been done by her enemies that wanted to you know to uh, get rid of her because she was from their perspective destroying Rome 
so, <laughs> so being aware of that information is something that, that helps us uh, on, on one side. On the other side, you mentioned how uh, gender equality was something that was much more a reality in, in, in uh, native uh, Egyptian society mm -hmm. than it was for Greeks and especially for Romans. Yes. Uh, they were even, yeah, uh, even worse. Uh, less equals. <laughs> Uh, so these are things that we try to take into account into, uh, into both the regular game and something that we want to uh, explain into the discovery tour. Mm -hmm. So hence we have tours that talk okay. about this. Uh, and sometimes we even take some liberties, uh, whereas in Alexandria, if you go into a, a, a gymnasium, if you go into a school, mm -hmm. you'll see both boys and girls at the classroom, oh, whereas okay. you would only have seen boys. Yeah. And this is the kind of information that we explain during the tour, mm -hmm. uh, saying that that was a liberty that we felt was right because mm -hmm. we don't, you know, we don't need, we don't need to be so accurate that that yeah. we girls wouldn't see themselves represented into a game. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's. I mean, it's crazy. Everything that we learned <laughs> making this, you know, we. I, I remember learning uh, through uh, letters, uh, ancient uh, ancient Egypt letters that men had uh, days off. Uh, for paternity oh, leaves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, depending on the dynasty, but yeah, they, they would have so days off. There was maternity <laughs> leave. Uh, there was mm -hmm. sick leave as well. Lots um, of it, yeah. Yeah. Lots of it? <laughs> yeah, no, it was, no it really, it really. Was a, it was a pretty yeah. developed system. If you yeah. were injured on the job or you were sick, you had so many yeah. days off and no one would say a thing about it. And yeah. You just reported sick that day. Yeah. There's a lot of records from Dira Medina where it talks about sick pay and maternity and paternity leave where it was just a uh, part of society and everyone expected that to happen to you at some point. So, yeah. <laughs> Social insurance. Yeah, although weekends weren't really a thing. Yeah, no, not and yet. they're weekends yeah. days long. So, so you so kind of had to take sick days. <laughs> so I guess having a thing, like, uh, thank God it's Friday wouldn't make any sense if you had that into one of no. our speech, right? No, it no. It would be more thank God it's a holiday of thought of yeah. the day that we'll go watch the raid. If it was a religious holiday, then everyone yeah. got the day off, but there weren't really rest days in the other sense. No. But there were a lot of religious holidays. Yeah, there Yes, it wasn't they, a terrible love, life. they love their festivals. So. I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just so amazed about like, everything that the team has done throughout the process of making this game about uh, science that the ancient Egyptian knew. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, we st we're not st yeah. st still not clear yeah. how they build the pyramids, but like, let's, let's take that away from the subject. Just talking about medicines, yes. uh, like, it's, it's incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. the, like all the the Ebers, uh, Ebers papyrus, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that explain. Oh my God, yeah, that one's incredible. <laughs> that explain. Uh, I mean, surgery and uh, yeah. uh, uh, or prosthesis. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, we have a friend who actually that is her specialty. Uh, she studies skeletons mm. and just studies the medicine and the different deformities and illnesses people had at that time. Different degrees yeah. of health and how they were treated by society, yeah. let alone how they affected the body. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy when we think about uh, mummies, when we see them, we don't necessarily think about like, well, that person was maybe like more bending on one side, like yeah. like Ramses, or yeah, yeah, yeah. or you know, or, or someone else, like had a, had a crooked nose yes. or something like that. <laughs> so, and that that's even something that was that was very surprising is to see the the famous like mummy portraits that are like linked to the oh, Fayum yes. regions. Yeah, the Roman ones. Yeah, and uh, it's it's obviously again it's it's a bit early for for time period of our game mm -hmm. because it was mostly popular with the Romans, but again like. We couldn't just pass by and not mention that yeah. it's so beautiful. It's yeah. like I ever, the first time I've seen that, I, I thought that was that was a joke. It wasn't like it wasn't made <laughs> around around like uh, uh, the beginning of our current era, but like yeah. something very modern, like Italian painting would would be. Yeah, Picasso went through a whole phase of copying them and taking details from them. So yeah, they were really they were really incredibly popular to the modern century. But I think that painting tradition probably did exist in the Ptolemaic period. It just wasn't attached to funerary objects, so it doesn't survive. But you'd have other paintings in your house, potentially, that we just don't have, you know, on the record anymore. But, yeah, they're, they're perfectly evocative of what the people would have looked like, and they're so individual and wonderful looking. What do you, how do you choose uh, the little text box to pop up in the game? It's... <laughs> Just something, it, it came from actually from the developers, from the team, not even from myself or yeah. from the historians, all the tips that appear on screen. Mm -hmm. It's just people from mm -hmm. the team that made, that 
every, anything that they, they was striking to them, they wrote it down, and then we made a list. Oh, okay. And so it was it was fun for me to see yeah. like what people were what paying. people yeah <laughs> like people who had no reference for any of this what they thought was interesting about this history. Exactly. It's very cool. And then uh, yeah, it's I guess it's just you know all of these small bits of of history that we learn, all of the different people in the dev team make it into the game and together because because the sources that they use make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's put together, like the world is believable in some yeah. ways. It's, oh. it's living and breathing by it on its own and, uh, and it's, it's fun and compelling. I mean, it is an incredibly beautiful game. It really uh, is. I, just seeing all the details that are in it, I mean, even if they're replicated or anything like that, it's the amount of work that went into this is incredible. Um, the, that show Rome that used to be on HBO, the historian that worked on it said that they went for uh, authenticity rather than accuracy. Mm -hmm. And I can see that's what you guys did here because you created this entire world to immerse yourself in rather than making sure that everything was accurate or that... The but it feels completely believable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a perfect way to get people interested in this part of history because they can have this immersive experience in it, uh, but still realize that there is a history to it that they need to learn more about. So <laughs> it's uh, so, so la lasting promise, but yeah. no, no, the no, other no, thing that course. struck us is that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Carter's discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb mm -hmm. was, was probably something that was so important to uh, making people aware of Egyptology yeah. in the 20th century. And then, and then we see that some products, you know, of entertainment of or, or news mm -hmm. make people interested, and it creates passion. And then passion leads to like new professions. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty sure as a historian, I I like video games as a, as a yeah. kid, like historic video games. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't have the technology to create games like this one yet, but you know, it's it's always that just that little seed that you never know what's going to happen next, and it's uh, it's so. Yeah. I, we don't know with this game. It's <laughs> I mean, it's brand new, but. But uh, reactions are very good so far. People are are interested into into Egypt, into the story. So, mm -hmm. so I think we we reached the goal that we wanted to achieve mm -hmm. with just making it accessible. Yeah. No, I'm highly impressed. And like Bethany told me, her students are coming to her about how amazing they find the game, and yeah. it's really causing a lot of they people. They really are. Yeah. yeah. And they have questions. They're interested. Will follow up and ask me. So what what do I read? What's next? What can, it's it's wonderful. It really is. <laughs> so yeah, it's this keeping me busy. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much yeah. for the opportunity to to talk about thank this you. today. It's uh, really a, a dream project for uh, for people at uh, at Ubisoft on Assassin's Creed. So um, so that's that's what we want to <laughs> to achieve. And uh, I'm really glad that we're there yeah. today and, and able yeah. to talk about this. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a treat for us, like thank seeing Karanis, even if it's a fictionalized yeah. version of it, just to see any of these monuments that we've You know what, that's now see. how I'm going to think of Karanis, yeah, and my exactly. head is going to be... <laughs> <laughs> With Ramsey-eyed statues and everything, yeah. Um. Absolutely, <laughs> I've been talking down my town for too long. <laughs> no, I, it's, I mean, like I was saying before, we always had to use our imagination, and seeing it, even if it's not perfectly accurate, is still amazing to us. Great. So, thank you. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs>